Hey, what's going on there, guys? Nick here from Absolute MTG, and today we're going to be taking a look at Abzan Control for the Fate Reforged Season of Standard. By now, it shouldn't be a surprise to anybody that Abzan is one of the best contenders in the standard format as far as Tier 1 decks go, if not the best deck in the format. Now, uh, with the different variants that are floating around with Abzan, whether you're playing mid-range, control, or the aggro variant, I definitely think that this is the most well-rounded and consistent variant of Abzan out there. Uh, I've been playing this list for quite some time now, and I really enjoy it, and it's been putting up some really good results. So... Uh, to start things off, the first creature that we have in the deck is Courser. So we don't run very many creatures in the deck. We're actually only running nine of them, and four of those slots are for Courser. So Courser in the mid-range and the control matchups allows us to gain advantage by being able to play lands off the top, and it also gains us back some life, which uh, incrementally can help us out a huge amount uh, based on the matchups that we're playing against and based on how grindy and how aggressive our opponent is actually able to play. Uh, next, we have Siege Rhino, which we're playing a four of as well. Uh, Siege Rhino is ultimately just like one of the best creatures in the format. Uh, we get to gain three life and drain three life whenever it hits the battlefield. And if our opponent doesn't deal with it, we are just hitting for four every single turn. And the Trample provides a good amount of pressure as well. Uh, we do have one Tasker in the list. I actually want to bump up Tasker to a two of. Uh, however, as just a one of, the guy is absolutely ridiculous. Every single time you resolve him with four mana open to be able to uh, mill off the top of your library with some manipulation, um, Tatsugur is absolutely broken and gives you so much card advantage that it's ridiculous. I've won so many matchups with Tatsugur just based on being able to get back cards uh, from the graveyard and recurring removal or even like another Siege Rhino or maybe one of the Planeswalkers. It's absolutely nuts. As far as our Planeswalkers are concerned, I'm playing one Soren. Uh, the Soren will actually side out for matchups that are playing like Crackling Doom, just because you don't want them to be able to two for one you whenever you make the guy. Uh, however, in the other mid range matchups, like in the Mirror match, uh, Soren actually ends up being really good, even against the aggressive aggro decks. Uh, whenever you're able to just play a Siege Rhino, play Soren, uh, uptick, and then swing with him, uh, you end up gaining a huge amount of. Uh, actual momentum and it actually shifts the board state com like completely uh soren ultimately just ends up being a great way to just kind of pressure the board when you're ahead and even whenever you're behind and it's kind of a uh, locked up board state where you both have siege rhinos or something like that uh the soren lets you get a little bit more of an advantage over your opponent uh, the same thing pretty much goes with Liliana Vess. It's bad in the very aggressive matchups. However, in the slower matchups, it honestly just uh, allows you to find exactly what you need and be able to overcome whatever board state you're actually in, uh, and especially based on uh, you having information of what your opponent actually has in hand. You can absolutely just kind of graft the game in whatever direction you want it based on what you're tutoring and putting on top of your library. Otherwise, just forcing your opponent to discard cards is great, and if you at least get one tutor out of the Liliana and your opponent downfalls it, that's exactly what you want because you still get to draw the card that you actually need and your opponent wasted removal on it. Uh, Elspeth is kind of like the big finisher in the deck where uh, once you get to that six mana range, it's either going to wrath the board because your opponent has overcommitted and uh, they want to just outplay and outrace you based on big creatures. Um, and also just being able to make tokens and just flood the board provides for a really easy win condition or really easy blockers just until the point where you actually ultimate the Elspeth. And our last planeswalker here is Ugin. So uh, Ugin absolutely sides out for any of the matchups where you just don't want to see him in your opening hand. Uh, usually in your opening hand, uh, Ugin is really awful just because he can get thought seized. Uh, you want to see him late game, but uh, in some of those matchups like aggro, you would just rather see like another removal spell or a drown in sorrow or, or something like that. Um, so for any of the very aggressive decks where you just don't even want to uh, get up to that point where you're at eight mana, uh, you side out to Ugin. However, in like the mirror match and the other grindy matchups, Ugin just ends up being one of the biggest ways to blow out a game. Now, uh, as for our spells in the deck that we're playing outside of our planeswalkers and our creatures, 
Uh, we have three Thoughtseize to be able to pick away at what our opponent has. There's also one more in the sideboard for the mid-range matchup and the uh, control matchup as well. I also have three pre-sideboarded Bile Blights as well. So uh, with Green Devotion seeing more and more play, the Bile Blights end up being really good against them just because you can get rid of stuff like their Voyaging Satyrs, overcommitted Elvish Mystics if they're just trying to make mana and ramp into their big guys. But uh, Bob Light is equally as good up against the, the teamer combo deck as well, just because you can get rid of the saber tooth with the Bob Light and, uh, circumnavigate through the whole indestructible clause on it. Um, so Bob Light ends up being really good on very awkward and narrow angles, but, uh, for the most part, you get rid of the problematic cards in the format, like Rabble Master, uh, Shaman of the Great Hunt now, and, uh, just any of the other kind of stray things like Fleece Main Line as well. Uh, we have... Four Heroes Downfall, just kind of like a mainstay for this type of a deck. Some lists play three. I like to have four just for more consistency for hitting Planeswalkers, uh, especially whenever you're playing against Ashiox. Uh, Ashiox is really annoying, and you want to have the downfall for it, and you want the consistency for it as well. Uh, I have four Abzan Charm, so really great for allowing you to get some card advantage whenever you're playing in the longer matchups, and uh, even just whenever you have to use it as removal for uh, something like a Whisperwood Elemental so your opponent doesn't get uh, way too much card advantage over you. Uh, it's great for that as well. Uh, you rarely use it to distribute counters, but sometimes um, if you want to just get an edge over your opponent and they uh, declare blockers in an awkward way where you can get advantage over them by distributing counters, then you can get through it with that type of a board state. Uh, but usually you're either drawing or you're exiling with it. Uh, there's also a uh, murderous cut just as a one up in the main board. There's one more in the sideboard whenever you want some more removal just for one for one trades with what your opponent's actually trying to do. I'm also playing two Utter End in the main board as well. So this is more of a catch all for Planeswalkers as well as cards like uh, Outpost Siege that your opponent might uh, be playing over something like Chandra Power Master. So uh, where your hero's downfall could kill Chandra, your Utter End can actually deal with both Chandra and the Outpost Siege as well. And then just a singleton and hostilities in the main board and one more in the sideboard to complement it. Uh, mainly for any situations where your opponent just overextends on the board state. Uh, honestly, even if you're playing against like mono or red sly and it elongates to the point where you're able to cast an end hostilities, it's just really good being able to board wipe them. And uh, even for the mirror match and stuff like that, the end hostilities ends up being really good. Uh, you are basically a control deck after all, and being able to wrath the board uh, after your opponent overextends, thinking that all you have is one for one removal, um, the end hostilities honestly just really hurts them and can basically just win you a game. As far as the sideboard is concerned, I have four Fleece Main Line, four Drowned in Sorrow, two Glare of Heresy, a Thought Seize, a Read the Bones, end hostilities. Murderous Cut, and Bob Light in there. So uh, first and foremost, the Fleece Main line is for the Mirror Match, uh, for Control, and also for the Extremely Aggressive decks. So against this Extremely Aggressive decks, you side out like your big cards, your Ugin, uh, one or two copies of your Elspeth, depending on uh, how low CMC they actually are. Uh, usually you just cut two of the uh, the Elspeths just to be able to play the Fleece Mains and uh, any just of the really expensive cards that you're actually playing, you want to see the Fleece Main line and just at least be able to like chump block their guys, especially like if they're pumping them with Titan Strength or something like that. Um, for like the mid range and the control matchups, Fleece Main ends up being just really good at forcing your opponent to have to deal with it, uh, which allows you more of a actual range of being able to do a whole lot more. Your opponent wastes resources on killing the Fleece Main line, whereas they would be keeping removal like Heroes Downfall for better threats that you're actually going to commit. Um, so it's basically like you're kind of baiting your opponent when the mid-range and the control matchups to uh, waste cards. And in the aggro uh, matchups, you're using it as a cheap blocker or just kind of fodder whenever your opponent is just going to try to trade like a two for one for that fleece main line uh, just to begin with. Uh, the downfall is basically like for the hyper aggressive decks. Uh, you just want to have enough committed ways to be able to board wipe them and consistently just because those decks can get very out of hand very quick. And uh, especially with the decks that are playing like a Chrome Crusader where they can just elongate the board state to have just a bunch of 1-1 uh, one -one tokens, you want to have the Drown and Sorry to be able to deal with it. Uh, the Glare of Heresy is for the mirror match so you can get rid of like any Fleece Main Lion, uh, Anafenza's, Siege Rhinos. Uh, but it's also useful for matchups like Heroic, where you're able to just hit like all of their dudes. 
and just have an easy way to uh, deal with their creatures. Um, there's honestly no better feeling than uh, playing against heroic, uh, using a or attempting to use a glare of heresy, uh, where your opponent will just play like a uh, protection spell, give themselves like protection from white to protect their dude from your glare of heresy itself, and then you just uh, delve and murderous cut the creature away. So you effectively had your opponent waste one of their cards in their hand, uh, while at the same time you're wasting cards, they're also wasting theirs, and theirs are much more uh, potent to them in actually helping them win the game, whereas you just have so many removal spells that you're just going to draw into, or even just your threats are actually better than theirs. As I mentioned before, the uh, the thought season here is for the slower matchups, the mid-range and the control matchups, just so that you can pick away whenever um, the game gets to the point where you're both just kind of uh, trading like one-for-one -one cards. Uh, having the thought seize, unless you're both in uh, absolute top deck mode, um, having more copies of Thoughtseize just ends up being really good for you. And especially if Control pops up, you want to have the Thoughtseize always for the Control. Um, Read the Bones is kind of the same thing. You just want more card advantage whenever you're playing really long, grindy matches. Uh, then Hostilities is basically for the same thing. You want to punish people for overextending on the board, thinking that uh, because they have two Siege Rhinos, they instantly beat you because you only have one. Um, so you just kind of bypass the one for one aspect of playing this type of a deck where, um, against decks like green devotion, it doesn't become a, Oh, do you have enough ways to one for one answer me? It's, uh, if I draw into hostilities and you overcommit it on the board, you're pretty much just going to lose because I have that in hostilities. There are some outlier instances, like they play a Ugin ramp into Ugin, then all you have a, all you have is basically a way to deal with, uh, their board and not the Ugin itself, but and hostility is, is pretty damn near a uh, win condition as far as playing against the Devotion decks is concerned. Uh, there's also the one Murderous Cut and the Bob Light. So Murderous Cut is for like any of the matchups where you just want uh, more one-for-one -one removal uh, to be able to just deal and pick off threats. And uh, the Bob Light is, again, for like the, the hyper-aggressive decks, especially if they're trying to just jam... Uh, a whole bunch of creatures like with the same name. Um, so if like you're playing against Sly, Bob Light is just really good at getting rid of like all of their tokens when you don't have a uh, down or not a downfall, a drawn and sorrow. Uh, but it's equally as good whenever they're just playing the same creature over and over again, and uh, you're just able to wipe the board with all of it. And even against like the heroic decks, you just want to have a uh, small cheap removal that could potentially just ping off a creature in the early turns, whereas. Uh, you don't have to wait for like NN hostilities to just wipe everything. Um, you just want to have some cheap removal for some of those types of matchups. So that about does it for our deck tech here for abs and control and what I've been playing for it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button on the video and to subscribe to the channel for more Magic the Gathering content. But until next time, guys, thank you for watching and peace out.